Hey, what's up YouTube, it's Icy. And today I wanted to create this video to discuss something very important in the realm of jailbreaking, specifically related to the iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak and which tool you use. Either the PP Helper app, which installs the PP Combination Pangu app in Chinese, or Cydia Impactor, which installs the regular Pangu app in English. See, there's so much misconception and misinformation going on right now, suggesting that if you utilize the Chinese version, you'll actually get a one-year certificate and you will not have to reinstall the app for 365 days and you won't encounter any complications at all with the PP Pangu app. That's not the case whatsoever. I'm here to tell you absolutely everything you need to know, the differences between the two applications and how they actually function. Before we get into that though, if you happen to jailbreak on your device, either utilizing the jailbreakme9.com website I highlighted or any other website, you may have noticed already or you will notice shortly that your application will not work and you'll need to reinstall it using the assistance of a computer. That's because it was distributed using a developer enterprise account that is no longer active. The certificates that did distribute it have been revoked, the account was terminated, so eventually the app will stop working for every single individual who installed it on their device already. So you'll need to get the jailbreak app again. If that's you, it's completely fine. Just delete the application and reinstall it utilizing the computer method. Now jailbreakme9.com is still a great resource. It will contain full info for you. It will always have the updated jailbreak information what the current jailbreak is, full links to everything, as well as a way to be notified and informed when brand new jailbreak utilities are issued. So you can subscribe to the email notifications to be informed when a new jailbreak is available and you will only be emailed when a brand new jailbreak has been released or when an existing utility has been updated. It's a very powerful tool. Check it out at jailbreakme9.com. All right, now we need to get into the differences between the two. I actually created two in-depth videos. The first one on the PP Helper tool that actually installs again that Chinese version. And then the second one I created yesterday on the Cydia Impactor and Pangu English application. So let's first of all focus on that one. How does that work? Because it's so much easier than the PP Helper version. So basically you just use the Cydia Impactor application on Windows or Mac, which was created by Soric, who also created Cydia. And at that point, you just install the IPA, which is just an application file. Now, what you have to do during that process is input your Apple ID and password, and it self-signs it using Apple's own service. See, Apple actually introduced the option alongside iOS 9 to be able to self-sign your own applications, so that way they can get more people interested in developing because you don't have to have a $99 developer account to try applications and to sign them yourselves. So if you do use Cydia, Impactor on your computer to actually get this Pangu application here. So if you're just a regular individual with a regular Apple ID, you'll get it for seven days and then you'll have to reinstall it to use it again. It's just the limitation of Apple's self-signing services, but if you are a registered developer, you will get a 365 day certificate and that way you won't have to re-sign it every week if you want to utilize it. Of course though, this application is only relevant if your device reboots because the jailbreak is semi untethered so to speak. So what you could do after jailbreaking is in fact fully delete the Pangu app or the PP app if you happen to have that one and just never reboot your device. I don't care if it's for 365 days or for two months. Just so long as you don't reboot you won't have to use it again and then of course if you reboot you will either have to utilize the application that you have installed on your device. If you don't have it you need to install a new copy of it and the same thing applies if the certificate has expired. Now let's get into how the PP or Chinese version tool works because that one is much more complex. Essentially, they rely on the use of a developer enterprise certificate. Now, during the actual jailbreak process, what it will do is it will check to see if their certificate is still active. If it isn't, then it will fall back to the self-signing method and you'll be required to input your Apple ID and your password. But if it's able to detect the certificate, then in theory, that application should persist for 365 days on your device 
device and you'll be able to use it for a full year unless Apple revokes it. That's absolutely key. Just like Apple revoked the certificate utilized by jailbreakme9.com and all of the other on-device jailbreaks, it's the exact same thing. They utilize a developer enterprise account. And when we go ahead and switch on over here to a direct Q&A from Apple in their developer resources section and we scroll down, they say, quote, if you are an in-house enterprise developer, you will need to be careful that you do not revoke a distribution certificate that was used to sign an app any one of your enterprise employees is still using as any apps that were signed with that enterprise distribution certificate will stop working immediately. So remember that is crucial that you understand Apple is constantly revoking these developer enterprise certificates. And when that happens, just like what happened with the Safari based jailbreak, you will A, no longer be able to install it using the same certificate and B, you will no longer be able to use that application if you already had it installed. So what that means is that any of these PP combination Pangu jailbreak applications that are installed on devices will stop working after their certificate gets revoked. The actual device will check randomly upon a reboot whether the certificate is active. If it's not active, then it won't let you open the application no matter what. There's absolutely no way to circumvent that. So it will stop working randomly. You need to know that if you utilize the Chinese version. And it's not like these developer enterprise certificates just grow on trees. Let me tell you, it is incredibly hard to sign up for a developer enterprise account. I know for a fact firsthand because a couple of years ago I signed up for one for free app life and I was able to get one. However, it was revoked eventually because we were distributing something outside of the app store that Apple wasn't okay with. Eventually they caught on, they always catch on eventually, and it's not going to take an entire year for them to catch on. Just with the on-device jailbreak, for instance, it only took a a couple of days. Now, Apple only issues these developer enterprise certificates to official companies. That's how we were able to get one through Free App Life, and that's how all of the certificates that PP Helper is using were actually issued initially to official Chinese companies. That's not to say that PP Helper just has one certificate, though. No, they have more than that. At least it would appear so. Let me go ahead and switch on over here to something that I found incredibly interesting, a discussion that was started on Reddit. This individual happened to notice that on on his router when he was debugging it through his DNS history, he noticed that his own device was accessing PP's website at random times without him even having to open the PP combination Pangu app. You can see over here there are requests to api.25pp.com and it looks like quite a few of them. From there, Sorik actually replied and he said, quote, I pasted this at Pangu and they pasted it at 25pp and supposedly this is related to automatic updates for the certificate which would expire. Pengu also said that their recommendation is that people use the English version of the jailbreak. So guys, Pengu themselves are even recommending to use the English version. They don't suggest that you guys default to use PP Helper unless you absolutely want to. Remember, that's ultimately up to you, but something that you need to know is that when you actually jailbreak using this PP application, apparently there are so many requests that your device sends out to PP's own servers, again, those api.25pp.com requests. And while the topic of discussion appears to be the other PP app that's installed and not the PP combination Pangu one, it's very likely that that also uses this same method. And what's really interesting to contemplate or think about is the PP application actually replacing its own certificate. Now that doesn't really seem like it's possible, right? But it may be with a jailbreak. See, since the PP Pangu app by default tries to utilize a developer enterprise certificate, if it gets revoked, it won't work. It's as simple as that, and it will stop working for everyone who previously installed it. But if they're constantly finding and acquiring these new certificates from official companies, likely paying them large sums of money to do so, and they're storing them on their server, and the PP Pangu app is constantly making requests to their server to check to see whether their certificate is still active, then it could be theoretically possible if the jailbreak is still active, meaning a device is able to open up Cydia and the kernel has been patched successfully, so the device has yet to reboot, that the application itself may download an updated certificate and replace a new signature in the app binary containing the updated certificate. So this is some pretty insane stuff, guys. It seems like the Pangu combination PP app may actually go out and constantly check to see if there is a new certificate because they know this. Honestly, let's face it. 
PP and Pangu are very smart and they do know that eventually all of those certificates will get revoked. That's why inside of the PP helper tool on desktop, it first checks to see if there is an active certificate. If there's not, it falls back to the self-signing method. So at the end of the day, between PP helper and Cydia Impactor, they actually utilize the same install method. Just one, the PP helper tool, checks to see if they have a developer enterprise certificate first, and then they'll use that instead of the self-signing method because obviously it's better, right? I mean, it isn't limited to that seven day time frame. It's only limited to when Apple actually revokes it. And that could be in two days, that could be in seven days, or on the off chance that it's even longer. Again, that means you won't have to re-sign it. But personally for me, I feel like the English version is definitely the way to go because I don't want my jailbreak application in the background to constantly check and connect to a Chinese based server. I mean, hell, if it's currently doing that right now, what's to stop them from in the future having the application connect and check for other things or mine for data. I mean, obviously they're probably not going to do that, but I just want to be on the safe side. I'm fine with self-signing it on my own computer with my own Apple ID and knowing that I'm using the creator of Cydia's own tool to do so. Remember, Pangu themselves, who while they are tied to 25PP in business dealings, are separate from 25PP and they recommend using the English version. There's a reason they recommend doing that. And while it may be a slight inconvenience to have to re-sign the application every seven days, of course, unless you are a registered developer, remember this is better than nothing. We have a jailbreak now. I'm so pumped. I'm really happy that we're now able to jailbreak iOS 9.3.x. And I personally have kept my device without having to reboot for months on end before. So you can do the exact same thing. It doesn't matter if you can't open the Pangu application, just so long as you don't reboot your device, you'll continue to be able to use Cydia for weeks and months to come really until when you actually reboot your device. And if you do whatever, it doesn't matter. You can still boot up and use all of your non jailbreak applications just fine. You don't have to actually connect your device to your computer and install anything or run anything until you want to use your jailbreak following a reboot. And if you want to switch from using the Chinese version to the English Pangu app, just like I said earlier in this video, all you have to do is uninstall the current app that you have and reinstall the new one utilizing Cydia Impactor, my guides below. So guys, that's really everything you need to know related to PP as well as Pangu, the differences between them. And I just want to make sure that you're all fully informed when you actually go to jailbreak, whether you want to use the Chinese version or the English version. And now the choice to which one you want to use is up to you down below in the description I will have links to both my tutorials there's just one post on my site that has both embedded there I really hope you guys liked this video clarifying things for you be sure to give it a huge thumbs up if you did let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section and until next time this is ICU signing out join the iCrack your iDevice community on patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below